An hour ago, the Endeavor's Fix-It crew got their wake-up call. Singer Jackson Brown's Doctor My Eyes. Doctor My Eyes. Well, the song is appropriate, of course, because the astronauts are trying to doctor the out-of-focus Hubble telescope. Welcome back to our viewers from CNN in the United States and around the world on CNN International. John Holloman watching as the uh, Space Shuttle Endeavour astronauts continue to repair the Hubble Space Telescope. A solar panel is being repaired, replaced at this moment, the last of two to be uh, repaired aboard the telescope tonight. Astronauts say they're a little bit ahead of schedule. They've been out in space for more than three hours, and um, they have another three hours that they could stay out there if need be. In fact, they could stay out longer than that, according to uh, the uh, managers on the ground and the manufacturers of their spacesuits. They could stay out as long as eight hours at a time. This is a special report from CNN International. Hello and welcome to this special report on CNN International. I'm Bettina Lucia. We want to take you live into space, where the astronauts from the U.S. Space Shuttle Endeavour started their third spacewalk a short while ago. Their mission to fix the Hubble Space Telescope. And what you're watching there are right now live pictures. Basically what the, what the two astronauts uh, have to do in the next few hours is to to fix the telescope's bad eyesight if we put it a little bit uh, bluntly here they will exchange a camera and the two people you are seeing floating right now uh, yeah let's let's see what they're doing right now This is the third spacewalk of this mission, and it's the second one for the two astronauts, Story Musgrave and Jeffrey Hoffman. And basically what they will do is uh, exchange cameras. They will uh, build in WIFPIC, that is a wild field planetary camera, and that includes lenses which will compensate for some of the flaws that have been on the, the telescope Hubble's main mirror. And with that uh, repair, NASA hopes to regain most of the Hubble's lost promise of getting crisp images of the faintest and oldest heavenly bodies. The spacewalk started about an hour ago. And during the next minutes and hours, we should uh, get very exciting pictures. And joining us now is CNN's John Holliman who will give us more of a running commentary on this spacewalk. Welcome, John. Well, Tina, it's nice to be with you again here on CNN International. The astronauts, uh, as you pointed out, got started early. They were supposed to leave the cargo bay of the shuttle about uh, 30 minutes from now, but what they're trying to do is get out into space as quickly as they can after they wake up so that um, they won't be tired at all at the beginning of their spacewalk. I'm going to get to a position where I can see a little bit better what's going on out there in space. I'll tell you this, uh, there are two astronauts, Jeff Hoffman and Story Musgrave. Jeff Hoffman has his feet attached to the robot arm, which you see in the center of your screen. Story Musgrave is standing on what NASA calls a portable foot restraint. It's a little uh, white pad that has been uh, temporarily attached to the side of the space telescope. And um, uh, if you look right in the middle of your screen on the other side of astronaut Musgrave, you'll see the, uh, the edges of a white rectangle. That white rectangle is the uh, outer side of the wide field planetary camera. That's the machine that they're going to be replacing over the next hour to 90 minutes. In order to get it out of the telescope, they have to put uh, something on the outside of it that you can uh, hook a human hand to. And uh, that's what they're doing right now. It's a, it's a device called a hand hold sort of looks like a wide picket fence 
It has five or six bars that go up and down where the astronauts can grab it by hand, and then there are, um, are beams that go across it, which are used to attach it to the back of this camera. This is perhaps the most delicate operation that the astronauts will have to perform over their 12-day uh, their space mission. After, after this uh, handhold is completely attached, uh, there's some latches that hold the camera into the telescope, which will have to be released. Right now, Story Musgrave over on the right is beginning to work on those latches. And uh, what we can do is, uh, is listen in for a couple of minutes and just uh, listen as the astronauts, Story Musgrave on your right, is the, uh, the payload commander and Jeff Hoffman out at the end of the robot arm on your left. astronauts have more than uh, more than 200 tools with them as they do this job. This is a picture from the robot arm itself, looking over the shoulder of Jeff Hoffman. In the center of your screen, you can see a spotlight pointed at a wrench, which um, is uh, going through a hole in the side of this camera to release a latch. And there's several of these latches. The astronauts count out each turn of the wrench, Patina, while they're, while they're doing their work because the people on the ground know how many turns it should take to loosen that particular bolt. How now, often have they trained for this? They have been training, uh, Story Musgrave has been training for two years uh, just to do these things. He told us a couple of weeks back that uh, he knows every single move he's going to make when he's outside the spaceship. They have to, they have to know every move because um, they, they can't afford to make a mistake particularly with this very delicate camera. As it comes out uh, in a few minutes, you'll see out at the, uh, the other end of the camera, you'll see a, a piece of glass, which is the, one of the most critically ground pieces of uh, optical equipment ever made by human beings. And um, the piece of glass on the old camera is not that critical because it's going back to Earth and they can replace it. But the one on the new camera, which they'll be installing in about three or four hours from now, uh, can't be out of alignment. And if they were to break it, it would be awful. Let's listen strap that's located on the outside of the drawer. And the handle's now attached onto the guide studs. That's the handle that'll be used uh, to hold it when Hoffman slides the uh, instrument out of the telescope. The instrument's about the size of a baby grand piano. The voice we're hearing is NASA commentator Kyle Herring. He's at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. and. Uh, Kyle Herring told me the other day he too has been training for about two years, so he will know exactly what to tell us at during various points in his mission. So what is new about this new camera? The new camera has uh, optical instruments that are ground differently than the original camera in order to compensate for the poorly uh, ground main mirror in the telescope. The pictures that we have been able to see from this camera, and about half the pictures from the telescope have come from this camera, have been pretty good pictures. They've been better than a lot of pictures of the planets as seen from telescopes on Earth, but the pictures would have been even more in focus had the new camera, or had the main mirror not been uh, damaged or, or grounded correctly. And uh, so with this corrective package in there, we should be able to see things on the surface of planets like Saturn and Jupiter that have never before been seen by humans. And how big is this camera? It's about the size, as, as Kyle was saying, of a grand piano. It uh, weighs about 600 pounds on Earth. It weighs about nothing in space. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it's, fairly, um, it's fairly large. It's, uh, if you consider the size of a piano, uh, the part that the astronauts are working on is the keyboard area of the piano. And the place where this very delicate mirror is located is at the far end of the piano, farthest away from the keyboard. And we just have to go now to a short break, but we'll be back in a moment, so stay with us. And we are back here with our extended live coverage of the third spacewalk of the astronauts aboard Space Shuttle Endeavour. And with me here is John Holloman, who is our expert on everything that's that's floating in space and right now um, i think that's probably true but <laughs> and what we're seeing in space at this moment is a couple of nasa astronauts uh, who've been training for years and years to uh, to do the various repairs necessary to make the hubble space telescope see straight and uh, stay in space and stay in orbit correctly on the left of your screen you see astronaut jeff hoffman who is attached to the shuttle's robot arm the robot arm, of course, is built in Canada, and it is being operated right now by Swiss astronaut Claude Nicolier. 
He is from the European Space Agency, and he is along on this trip because he has expertise in, um, in astronomy as well as operation of this robot arm. And uh, uh, the astronauts continue to, uh, to disconnect the, uh, the old wide-field planetary camera from the space telescope. The electrical connections will have to be unplugged, and uh, there's a good bit of work that has to be done before the camera, the old camera, can be removed. It's an interesting system. I guess it follows basic logic, but you know, what they'll do with this camera after they get it out is um, they'll just kind of hang it over the side of the shuttle's cargo bay for a few minutes, and then they will open a specially built compartment which brought up the new camera. They'll take the new camera out of its compartment, plug it in to the side of the telescope, and then they'll uh, use that compartment to store the old one for its trip back to Earth. How difficult a job is this? Is it going to be very tiring for these two astronauts? I mean, they will be floating, so to speak, for hours out yes, there. Yes, they will. I, and this is probably going to be the longest planned spacewalk. These astronauts have to be outside, according to NASA managers, at least seven hours to do this job. And their spacesuits uh, will only work about eight hours. So. They, uh, if they have too many delays, some of the things that they're uh, supposed to do tonight won't get done. It's, uh, I think it probably is tiring, but uh, the fact is they have allocated five nights to do spacewalks, and if the astronauts, if these astronauts, for example, were to come back in at the end of this mission and be exhausted, then they might s slow down the schedule for the spacewalks. They might give these astronauts a day off so that they didn't have to go back in space two nights from now. But the current plan is for them to go back out uh, in two nights, and the tomorrow night's spacewalk will uh, certainly be done by another team of astronauts. So they take turns, I guess that helps. Yeah. What can you tell us about the crew, about these two astronauts? Well, my favorite uh, NASA astronaut is uh, to the right of your screen right now. You can see Story Musgrave's left hand. He's, um, he is uh, 58 years old, which I think as a 45-year-old man who would like to be an astronaut someday is a pretty interesting thing. He, um, he was uh, hired by NASA at the very end of the Apollo era. Musgrave wanted to walk on the moon. And uh, after he was hired and started training to do that, they canceled the Apollo moonwalk program. And uh, they sent Story Musgrave to college. And uh, this man has more college degrees than anybody I've ever met. He's a medical doctor, a surgeon, has a degree in literature, has a degree in physics. Uh, He's six college degrees. He has uh, almost that many children. And um, he's been working for NASA steadily for decades. He is the, the, uh, the king of the spacewalkers. He knows more about extravehicular activities, as NASA calls these events, as, as anybody probably on Earth. And uh, is, uh, has choreographed, as I say, every step of these spacewalking activities for the astronauts. And he's the leader of the four astronauts who are outside. Uh, the man on the robot arm is Jeff Hoffman, a man who has done two previous spacewalks for NASA, a man who is also uh, has terrific expertise in operating outside in the cargo bay in uh, the uh, somewhat more dangerous uh, conditions that are there. How far away from each other are the telescope and the shuttle? Uh, well, they're connected at the bottom. The, the bottom of the uh, telescope is attached to the, uh, to the very rear end of the, uh, of the space shuttle. They made a special turntable for the telescope that's, uh, uh, that flew up with it. And um, the telescope is now sitting in that turntable. And um, hang on a second. It looks like there's something going on we should be listening to. It looks like I see some movement. Yep. They're beginning to, uh, to move out the old, uh, the old camera, I believe. Okay, my lights are good. Go ahead, take me up another six inches. Up another six inches, Jim. Claude Nicolier, uh, you can hear, has a, a sort of a French accent. That's the way you can distinguish it. Yes. You want to stop and pitch yourself down a little more? Yes. Yeah, I should. Okay. Okay, One way to avoid exhaustion, but you were asking about that, for Jeff Hoffman is that he doesn't have to move his body. Uh, his body is being moved for him by the robot arm operated by uh, Swiss astronaut Nicolier. You'll hear in a minute, uh, he'll give commands or he'll uh, say to Nicolier, move me six inches to the left or move me out one foot or something. Yeah, I think we ought to we ought to take it out. I'll redo the pitch and then we'll come in again. Okay. Yeah. You see Musgrave there on the right with his hand so we're now inside the, the wide field planetary yeah, camera. Jeff Story may not be able to get on the rail, so you'll have to really monitor over the top. Okay. I, I can see over the top. Okay. That's why I was having Claude take me up. 
the reason Musgrave is in the position where he is, you can see his head, I guess the end of his helmet there, he needs to look inside the telescope to make sure the mirror that's at the far end doesn't uh, hit the wall or hit the sides at all as it slides out. The, the uh, camera is mounted on rails, uh, sort of like a, a, a drawer in your kitchen is mounted on a rail to make it slide smoothly. Um, but there, there are rails on either side, top and bottom, uh, so that when this thing is locked into place, that mirror at the end and the other optical instruments are precisely aligned. Who built the mirror? Um, the mirror for this was built um, by um, a NASA contractor in the United One, States. Two, three, uh, you know, a lot of the parts were built by the European Space Agency, but this, I think, is an all-American project. I can, I can grab it if I need to. Okay. Go you know. ahead and take it out, Jim. Okay. Here it comes. Take it right away. All right, let's move back. Okay, continue to move back. I'm, I'm on the rail. That's great. Talking about uh, having his hand on one of the rails to uh, help guide the camera out. There's another camera called the Faint Object Camera uh, inside the telescope that is again built by the European Space Agency. Looking really good. Where's the new camera at the moment? It's in the cargo bay, probably 20 feet behind, sort of on our side of where the astronauts are. Have you let go, sir? No, I'm still there. I'm still protecting. You're all right. All six inches. Musgrave now protecting that mirror. Okay, you don't get away. All right, you let go now. All right, feel it. In just a minute, they will. Okay, let's back, Claude. Okay, let's pick up the red jump. They may, uh, in their original plan, was a plan to push the camera partially back into the telescope that would allow the astronauts to see what it would feel like when they have the new camera, sort of a practice maneuver for that. But at least so far, they don't seem okay, to be doing that. Tom, when I'm far away like this, I'll hold on to the uh, insulated pad. Good idea. Okay, Tom, you got it? Yes, sir. Okay, stopping now. The camera's out. Camera is out of the telescope. Are the other astronauts beside uh, Nick Hoyer also involved in this while this is going on? Yeah, there, there are two astronauts, Tom Akers and Kathy Thornton, who performed the spacewalk last night. And they are, uh, Tom Akers, I am hearing, talking to the astronauts outside. They're looking through the, uh, uh, the space shuttle's rear windows. And uh, they're offering suggestions and uh, commentary and helping to relay word from the ground. You can see the sun is coming up. Brace it against my knees, and that gives me a free hand yeah. to get some cooling on. Okay, space, beautiful. Yeah, the astronauts uh, needed to start this process in darkness, and so uh, it, it, was, it got dark 35 minutes ago. And uh, in just a minute, they'll uh, adjust the, uh, the brightness level on their camera. There you go. And, uh, Boy, the cavity just got totally black looking into the sun like this. I can't see it. Uh, you can see the astronauts are talking about looking down back into the telescope and because the sun sort of blinded them, they're unable to see what's going on. There. This is a picture from the robot arm itself, so we're looking now over astronaut Jeff Hoffman's shoulder. Uh, this camera weighs 600 pounds and it appears to be as light as a balsa wood box. At what speed is the, is the shuttle going at the moment, if we think about the conditions that these uh, two astronauts are working in right now? 17,500 miles per hour. It is going very fast. <laughs> um, but there is no wind, and there is no, uh, there's, there's not much atmosphere there, so they can't feel it. Um, as uh, an astronomer uh, pointed out to me last night, it's, it's almost as if they were falling at 17,500 uh, miles an hour, which is why, that's how they get the effect of weightlessness sort of a difficult concept yeah. to understand. Let me uh, play with the handling qualities while we're waiting here. Copy that. Here's if they bring it closer back now. Yeah, you can see Again. it. See Jeff the, Hoffman on the end of the robot you can see arm this with mirror. The, Let's uh, listen to Kyle Herring for a second. The, on his legs is uh, holding the wide field planetary camera. I'll do that too, but I can't do it until the sun moves. Okay. One of the tasks uh, after removing the camera is to partially reinsert it. And uh, he was noticing that the cavity was uh, very dark because of the sun angle, and he wanted to wait. And that's what he's doing now. And he's practicing some mass handling uh, of the camera to get a good feel for how it uh, moves about in the weightless environment. Story Musgrave is uh, 
Uh, his suit has no stripes on it, no markings, and he's up on the telescope as a free floater during this task. And the telescope weighs 600 pounds on the Earth, and if you look out at the far end of it, uh, sometimes you'll see the, uh, the end of the uh, camera uh, reflected against the telescope. You can see the mirror. The mirror is not very big, about six inches top to bottom and maybe a foot across. And we're getting sort of a side view of it, but you'd be able to see that very delicate mirror. There it is, coming up into view um, right now. Actually, if you look very closely, when it comes up into the light, you might even see the reflection of the mirror, uh, in the mirror of uh, Jeff Hoffman out at the far end. Now he's gonna... Um, it looks like the sun ought to be more off our tail in order to keep the whip back out of the sun. And NASA is uh, congratulating Copy itself here. already how the work has Copy been time. going on for the last uh, few days. But basically, this is a huge repair job, an incredibly expensive repair job. Yes, hundreds how of much, millions of dollars. How much is at stake here for NASA? Um, well, just to get the telescope working, um, uh, probably uh, uh, four to six hundred million dollars is at stake in, uh, uh, in, in the effort to fix this. But uh, a lot of people say much more is at stake than that, the whole reputation of the United States space program because if they NASA managers told me if the astronauts could not do all of these jobs successfully it would probably signal the end to any effort to try to build a space station using astronauts walking in weightlessness like this the fact is the astronauts have proven they can do a good bit of work in weightlessness out in the cargo bay of the shuttle and that's the way NASA's decided to uh, you can see light reflecting off that mirror now, right at the far end of the telescope, Bettina, so you can see sort of where it is in relationship to the rest of the telescope. Um, it's a, it is a big test for the, uh, uh, for the space program in the United States. When did, when did they first notice that they had a major, major problem? As almost as soon as they turned on the space telescope. It was launched Preparing three and a half years ago in 1990 in the spring. Camera. This is a task that's designed that's to uh, give the astronauts a feel for what the installation of the new camera will be like. And uh, again, Hoffman riding on the end of the robot arm. Bring me one foot support. Claude Nicolier is going to move the robot arm hey, Stuart, looks like you're to the back. left. Does that look better, Doc? Yeah, that's a lot better. Hey, how's it look inside the cavity to you? Blind mate and all that. Well, I can't turn that way right now. Why don't you float down and take a look, Story, before we uh, do this reinsertion? I think that you'll remember a couple of nights ago, the astronauts had a big problem closing a couple of doors over the shuttle's gyroscopes. Those doors are um, um, directly between the two astronauts, that uh, uh, latched area where they were having so much trouble is right there, and it appears to be tightly latched. MLI looks great. Yeah, with my head out of the turn, I can see it there. Looks beautiful. And Houston copies. Good news. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Uh, Bettina, let's talk about what's going to happen uh, over the next four Story or five hours. In, um, in about on the um, in the next two or three minutes, uh, Jeff Hoffman will attempt to uh, plug this camera back into the telescope as a test, and then he'll pull it out. And about 30 minutes after that, he will park it on the side of the space shuttle. He and Story Musgrave will uh, open up a container that holds the new improved camera, pull it out on the robot arm, just to, it'll look just like this, and uh, they will install it in the telescope. Musgrave on the right will be attaching electrical connectors and uh, the grounding strap and the, the various uh, things that provide power to the uh, camera and uh, get the pictures from the camera over to the radio transmitters to get them back to Earth. And uh, after they've done that, these two men are going to get to do something that no humans have ever gotten to do before. The two of them will attach themselves to the end of the robot arm, and the telescope itself will shift in the cargo bay. It will become tilted down. You can see the tail of the shuttle just at the lower right-hand corner of your screen. It will, uh, the top of the telescope will be tilted toward us, toward the, uh, the place where the rest of the astronauts are, up in the crew cabin. And then the robot arm will be extended up as far as it can go. The two astronauts will be up on top of the Hubble Space Telescope, as I say, higher in the cargo bay than astronauts have ever been before, and they'll be repairing or replacing two machines up there called magnetometers. 
these are uh, electronic devices. The telescope, to work properly, needs to always know where it is in relationship to planet Earth. And uh, scientists have determined the best way for it to know that is to uh, know where the Earth's magnetic field is. And these devices, the magnetometers, will uh, uh, allow it to know where the Earth is at all times. How soon will they know whether this new camera, for example, works perfectly, whether they installed it correctly? They'll know whether the electrical hookup is done within a few minutes. They won't know whether its, uh, its corrective optics are in fact correct until they open up the, um, the main aperture door on the telescope, and that might take uh, four to six weeks from now. But uh, they'll know almost instantly when light hits that mirror we were talking about and goes into the camera, because it'll be able to send back pictures instantaneously once the light gets to it from the stars. Okay, well, thank you very much, John, for coming up here again and, and joining us here. And that concludes our special report on the spacewalk of the Endeavour astronauts. We'll have more live coverage in the course of the next few hours. I'm Bettina Nusha. Thank you for watching. Coming up next, World News. This has been a special report from CNN International. Leftover Cold War tensions between the United States and Russia could be further reduced soon. U.S. officials say the two nations may aim their nuclear missiles away from each other. Presidents Bill Clinton and Boris Yeltsin have discussed the idea, as have U.S. and Russian military leaders. CNN military affairs correspondent Jamie McIntyre reports. For nearly half a century, U.S. nuclear missiles have been aimed at Russia's most vital military targets. But in a gesture heavy in post-Cold War symbolism, U.S. military planners are plotting new coordinates that would aim the nukes away from Russia and into the ocean. We're working very hard with the Russians to continue the denuclearization and to make uh, them uh, and ourselves and others feel more secure with that move. So that's one of the things we have under consideration, but no final decision has been made. Last year, Russian President Boris Yeltsin first proposed no longer aiming his missiles at American cities. But U.S. defense officials say they have no evidence the targets were changed and would like the retargeting to be part of a broader agreement to ease nuclear tension. The move would decrease the potential for disaster if a missile were launched by accident. But military officials say in a crisis, U.S. missiles could be reprogrammed in a matter of minutes. Still, critics say there are too many unanswered questions about who will ultimately control the former Soviet missiles, especially in the Ukraine, where officials are working to gain operational control of nuclear weapons. Verification is another sticking point. There's absolutely no way to determine whether the targets of these missiles have been changed. You're at best taking the other fellow's word for it, and at worst, you're kidding yourself. Military sources say the missile's computer memory must have some target information, so if launched accidentally, it won't fall back on the United States. While remote areas of the ocean would be the primary target, Russian bases and silos would remain in the missile's reserve memory. Aiming U.S. nukes at spots in the ocean would be a literal sea change, one the Clinton administration hopes it can announce at the Moscow summit next month. Jamie McIntyre, CNN, the Pentagon. Welcome back to CNN's live coverage of the repair mission on the Hubble Space Telescope. This is the third night of spacewalk for astronauts, and uh, I'll tell you that at this moment they are one hour ahead of the schedule that NASA had for what they are doing. Let's listen in now. NASA commentator Kyle Herring was just saying that the astronauts are... What's left oh, here, let's listen. The new camera is to disengage several latches and bolts that are holding it in place in this protective enclosure before removing it. Again, Jeff Hoffman is riding on the end of the robot arm, and Story Musgrave is the free-floating astronaut in front of the new camera. Astronaut Jeff Hoffman there telling Claude Nicolier, the Swiss astronaut who runs the Hubble's, or rather the robot arm, to move him on the arm. Uh, 
three feet to the left. And you can see the robot arm and astronaut Hoffman are both moving to the left uh, in the upper right-hand corner of our screen. Yeah. Astronaut Story Musgrave is standing between us and the new camera uh, that's going to be installed perhaps within a few minutes on board the telescope. The camera is locked in place in this storage container with a series of latches, and one by one those latches are being uh, loosened so that the astronauts will be able to pull the camera out, and uh, Hoffman will hold on to the camera, and uh, Nicole Ye, the astronaut operating the robot arm, will move him and the camera into position to, uh, to plug it in to the side of the space telescope. Joining us uh, to provide commentary are two astronauts who work for the Fernbank Science Center here in Atlanta, David Dundee and Anita Kern. David and Anita, good to have you back again. Last night we learned much from you about astronomy and things that the Space Telescope will be able to do. As uh, over the past hour and a half, we've been watching as the astronauts unplugged the old wide field planetary camera. Uh, what did it look like to you? I remember uh, what this camera looked like in the factory where it was being manufactured and it didn't look at all different to me than what it looked like uh, four years ago the last time I saw it. Well, it, it looked, as, as you uh, said earlier, like a grand uh, piano coming out, I guess without the keys or, or stool. Uh, I do want to make one comment about the wide field camera as we go along tonight. Uh, although it's, it's called a wide field camera, um, it's, it's kind of a misnomer. Uh, the, in fact, uh, a wide field camera uh, on the Earth, uh, uh, on the, an observatory, usually has a field of view of about five degrees. The wide field camera on the space shuttle, uh, rather on the Hubble Space Telescope, is only about 2.67 degrees. Uh, so that's how much of the, uh, of the 360 degree circle yeah. this camera can in, look at. In, in fact, if you wanted to take a picture of the full moon, it would take about 100 pictures with this instrument in the photo montage to give you an idea of how much uh, an area of the sky it looks at, even yeah. with a wide field camera. Yeah, is this, uh, would a camera like this be useful at all on a telescope that was on the Earth? Uh, yeah, there are wide field cameras used on the Earth to, to, for uh, surveys of the sky. Uh, there have been a lot of surveys done with various telescopes looking at uh, large scale structures in the sky. And that's exactly what this telescope will be looking for as well, large uh, scale structures in our universe. So this is the camera that they would point at Saturn to let us uh, see what Saturn looked like from the space telescope. Yeah, that's another use for this telescope. This telescope, will, uh, this uh, particular instrument on the telescope will be able to uh, look at uh, all of the planets except uh, for two, the Earth and uh, Mercury. Mercury uh, being too close uh, to the sun to be safely pointed that way. Well, we're gonna continue to listen in as the astronauts go through the painstaking procedure to get this camera out of its storage container and, uh, and up into the side of the Hubble Space Telescope. One of the reasons that they have to be so careful is that the optical instruments inside the camera are pretty delicate. Anita, um, what would happen if the astronauts were, for example, to drop this camera as, it, uh, was, uh, as they were pulling it out of the storage bin? Could it be destroyed? I mean, how delicate is it? It's very delicate. And in fact, uh, the tolerance on this camera, because of the uh, added mirrors to correct for the spherical aberration, this, one, this particular instrument won't use the CoStar corrective optics. So it has to be um, the difference between where these mirrors in this camera are located and the light coming from the telescope cannot be off by more than about 2% of the size of, say, a dime. Well, the rails and the uh, tracks that the camera slides in on are just n don't allow for that kind of tolerance. So they had to design it to be, um, when, once it's installed, to be corrected. And uh, so it's, it's a very tricky procedure, and there's a lot of precision involved. Yeah, what we're watching on TV right now is uh, astronaut Jeff Hoffman using a, what appears to be a ratchet wrench. I bet it's much more expensive than the one we use uh, in our projects at home, but he is using it to loosen latches that are holding the replacement wide field planetary camera in place. And actually what he's doing now is attaching a handrail to the outside of the wide field planetary camera. When you see the camera mounted on the side of the telescope, it, uh, it has a very smooth surface. And uh, that surface, the astronauts couldn't grab that surface, so NASA had to design something that would allow them to grab hold of the camera to move it. And that's the rail looking device that you see there about the middle of your screen. The uh, outer edge of the uh, wide field planetary camera is the white curved shape that you see at the very bottom of your screen. Astronaut Story Musgrave 
on your left is uh, continuing to work with the guide rail, get it attached to the, uh, to the side of this camera. NASA told us about three hours ago that the astronauts would be doing this job at about 1.30 in the morning Eastern time. It is 12.37 in the morning Eastern time, and so you can see how much ahead of schedule they are or else how, how well padded the spacewalk schedule was by the planners before the astronauts got to this point in their mission. They, uh, they work on this schedule, work it out, uh, based on how long it takes astronauts working in an underwater tank to, uh, to perform these jobs. Let's listen for again for a minute. Jeff Hoffman at the top of your screen is who you hear talking there. The ratchet tool is battery powered and uh, because bolts in space are difficult to turn by hand, you have to use a power tool. The reason they're difficult to turn by hand, as you can see fairly clearly in this picture, is because of the gloves the astronauts have to wear on their spacesuits. They're almost like boxing gloves. They're so thick. And if you had to use a, a small tool, it would, be a, it would be very difficult to do it by hand. So they have this uh, um, fairly exotic electric equipment to do the work. And they continue to make great progress. David Dundee, we, um, uh, as the old um, wide-field planetary camera was coming out of the telescope, I noticed the mirror at the end of the camera, and it didn't look that large. It, uh, it seemed a fairly tiny mirror. What's a, what does that mirror do? At the very uh, end of the, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, instrument, that is the mirror that takes uh, the light from the main Hubble mirror into the system. And um, the, the wide field camera then uh, takes that to make, to make an image. The, um, by the way, one of the other exciting things this camera can do in the solar system is uh, take a look at Halley's Comet, not just when it passes the Earth, wait every 75 years, but can watch the comet all the time. Really? All the way out and all the way back. And that's something we've never been able to do with a comet, to, to see what happens when it gets in the outer solar system as it loses its tail and uh, exactly what kind of uh, evolution the comet takes uh, as it uh, moves in the outer solar system far from the sun. I had no idea it could do that. That's interesting. So it, it can see things. Uh, uh, and there's no way to watch Halley's Comet from Earth, I guess, with anything like the clarity this thing would be able to do. Th that's correct. Uh, even with the 400-inch uh, telescope in Hawaii, uh, it would be uh, inaccessible now, just because kind of a, a dot at best. Let's watch now and listen as the astronauts remove the replacement uh, camera from its storage compartment. They have to be very careful. You'll hear them talking about fingertips and inches. Okay, astronaut Hoffman is doing nothing but holding on to it. Another astronaut inside the shuttle, Claude Nicolier, Nicolier, is moving Hoffman's body and the camera because he's attached to the shuttle's robot arm. Now the mirror at the end of this uh, replacement camera is covered right now and we won't be able to see it. It's, it's got a cover on it. Actually, you can see where the mirror is located um, out there at the end of the telescope. That cover will be removed in a few minutes by astronaut Story Musgrave and he's going to have to be very delicate in handling that mirror cover because uh, if the mirror were uh, misaligned, uh, as Anita just told us, by very much, this, uh, this multi-million dollar device would be worthless. The protective cover on the end of the new wide field and planetary camera visible as Jeff Hoffman raises it okay. out of the uh, protective enclosure.
This is a time for great precision and delicacy. You can see astronaut Story Musgrave on your left. He's going to uh, pull himself back over to the telescope and help guide the camera into the telescope. He's got to hook up electrical connections. The last uh, connection he has to make is a grounding strap, which just connects the metal on the camera to the metal on the telescope. It prevents uh, static electricity problems. You can see the, uh, the new wide field planetary camera pointing down with the mirror at the bottom uh, of the camera as it moves very slowly over to the Space Telescope. We're going to take a quick break, and um, when we come back, we'll see what happens next to the Wide Field Planetary Camera and the Hubble Space Telescope as CNN's live coverage from space continues. Stay with us. Welcome back. Two spacewalking astronauts are replacing the Wide Field Planetary Camera, main instrument aboard the Hubble Space Telescope right now. This is the picture over the shoulder of astronaut Jeff Hoffman. He's down at the end of the uh, shuttle's robot arm, which you see there, the big white thing on the left of your screen is the robot arm. The space telescope is uh, on the right of your screen, and that big rectangular hole in the upper right-hand corner of your TV screen is the place on the telescope where the replacement camera will be plugged in in a matter of minutes. NASA commentator Kyle Herring is, uh, is on NASA Select Television telling us how this mission is going so far. Timeline in their spacewalk checklist. You can see uh, Story Musgrave now walking hand over hand. I guess you could say walking, floating hand over Combined, hand. These two astronauts trained for more than 200 and, or 350 hours in the water. Now, NASA has put together an animated feature uh, speeding up all of the repair work, this particular uh, part of repair work. You can see now um, what we watched happen a couple of minutes ago is this uh, handhold fixture was uh, lowered and attached to the back of the replacement wide field camera. The old wide field camera was there on the right of your screen. This is what they're doing right now. Uh, they'll soon be removing this cover from the, uh, the mirror at the end of the camera, and the astronauts will uh, certainly get a speed much slower than this, put it into the side of the telescope. And at this point, astronaut Story Musgrave, who would be on the right of your screen, will uh, do some connections, and the two astronauts will slowly but surely push the new camera into place. After they get it into place, they will remove the hand holes and they will go back up to the top of the space telescope for the, the most fun part of their mission tonight. So there's the telescope on the right, tilted at an angle. The uh, wide field planetary camera that's going to be plugged into it, uh, not visible right now, but you can see astronaut Story Musgrave out in space um, on the right side of the uh, hole where the new camera is going to be plugged in. We can listen as the astronauts talk. And Actually, you can see the new camera. It's on the uh, upper left-hand corner of your screen, moving in the direction of, uh, of the place on the telescope where it will go. Anita Kern, we've, uh, we have heard from NASA experts that it's going to take at least six weeks before we know whether this uh, new camera is any better than the old camera, whether it's actually going to work, because we won't get pictures back from the telescope for that period of time. Why does it take so long? Well, they have to align the mirrors and they have to, um, there's a lot of various checkout routines that they go through, both with the uh, computer programming end of it and, and the actual physical uh, optics of the systems. And so that takes up quite some time to do. And I think they expect the first images back in six to eight weeks. So we'll, and these will be some of the first pictures that come back, the ones from the wide field planetary camera. Yeah, you're excited as an astronomer about that? Oh yes, we, uh, we expect to see all sorts of new and wonderful things in, in much better resolution than we have uh, prior to this point. This particular uh, instrument will produce images that have 10 times the resolution of the Keck telescope in Hawaii. So uh, that's 10 times uh, more detail than what we can uh, see from Earth. Uh, so that's the, it's 10 times better than the best we have on Earth, is that right? Yes, it, it would be, the res when we talk about resolution, what that really means is we'd be able to um, separate two headlights at about 3,000 miles. 
On a car. On a car, right. right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and, and the, 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 also, the other thing we should point out is that uh, when you make you take pictures with this, teles this particular instrument on the telescope, uh, it, there's no physical film inside or, or videotape. Uh, what, what is at the end of this optical system is a, uh, a sensor. It's called a CCD or a charge coupled device. And basically what that does is takes the light that enters the system and translates that into an electronic image. And that electronic image, it can then be beamed down to Earth and processed through a computer one way or another. And it's interesting that many of the telescopes, uh, ground-based telescopes now, are using these kinds of CCD devices uh, uh, because they're far superior to using uh, film uh, as astronomers have done for about a hundred years. Yeah, those CCD devices are uh, much more expensive and probably much better, but very similar to the same kind of devices that are in the very back of the TV camera that you're looking at me on right now. Actually, um, on the long range, the CCDs are less expensive because you don't have to worry about film or developer. Yeah, exactly. It'd be hard <laughs> to get the film back to the uh, local Kmart to, to get the two-for-one offer, I suppose, <laughs> from this camera. No um, mailers. Yeah, look, we're going to take a break at this moment. Uh, the live picture from space has gone away for a second or two. The astronauts are just ready to uh, accomplish what astronomers say is the most important thing they're going to accomplish on this mission in space. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The astronauts aboard the Space Shuttle Endeavor having another good night in space. They have been outside the shuttle now for about um, an hour and 52 minutes. They're uh, well ahead of schedule on replacing the uh, wide field planetary camera aboard the, uh, the Hubble Space Telescope. The uh, old wide field planetary camera, which by the way was working very well, was taken out of the telescope and stored, is now just hanging over the side of the shuttle uh, attached by a couple of guide wires and a new and improved version of the camera, which has new optics designed to compensate for the problem in the uh, telescope's main mirror, is uh, out in space. It's on, an, uh, on a carrier in the hands of astronaut Greg Harbaugh. Harbaugh is about ready to, uh, to plug it into the side of the space telescope, but I would be willing to bet you he does not do that while the, uh, the shuttle is not in communication with the ground, and while we are not able to have uh, live pictures from space, those live pictures we're told will come back in a matter of about five minutes. And when they do, we'll go back to them, of course. I'll keep one eye on the uh, NASA satellite feed and the other eye on you there. Uh, let's talk about um, how much better the new camera might be than the old camera. Anita Kern, you've, uh, you've seen the pictures from the, um, from the old version of the, uh, the wide field planetary camera. And uh, how do you feel about uh, how much better they're going to be when, uh, when this camera's fixed and checked out in a while? Well, you know, the old camera took about three 10-minute exposures of the Orion Nebula. This is a dust cloud that is a um, stellar birthplace in the constellation of Orion, and it did uh, detect uh, matter and debris, uh, actually rings around about 15 stars that uh, may indicate a formation of a, of a planetary system around those stars. But the exciting thing was it saw very uh, wispy structures that had never been seen before. And of course, astronomers were both thrilled and frustrated by this because with the old camera, they didn't really know if they were really seeing structures or if it was some artifact or problem that was coming out of the computer processing of the images. So now with the new camera in place, uh, we, we should be able to determine that. Also with the new camera, the sensitivity of the coatings on it should improve the the coatings on the new camera should improve the sensitivity by about a factor of two. Yeah, I'd like so. uh, you, Anita, and David Dundee to join me and watch very carefully as astronaut Story Musgrave, who you can see there on the right of your screen, attempts to take the cover off the pickup mirror out at the end of the space telescope. This, I believe, is going to be the most sensitive part of the job tonight. Um, this is the only time that a human being uh, is ever going to touch a working part of, uh, of the space telescope. And um, Story Musgrave is under orders to be very careful not to do anything to damage the mirror as he takes this protective cover off. Let's listen into the NASA commentators. And uh, if the two of you see anything that pleases or displeases you, let me know. You can see Musgrave's spacesuit has two spotlights on it that are shining right at that, uh, at that mirror cover. Okay, are the brakes on, Claude? Brakes on, Jack. Okay, we're holding steady. Button in is tall. The 
Aperture door open. Copy. Okay, he's beginning to hit a latch on the mirror cover. All of these, here it comes. Oh, no. <laughs> a moan from uh, everybody here as the satellite coverage from space went away. Um, we're going to have to wait until we get picture back to see how that did. We'll take a quick break, and uh, we'll see if the satellite gods will allow us to get the, uh, uh, the picture of that uh, cover on the mirror being, uh, being removed. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We've just gotten our live picture back from space. Let's go to it right now as the Endeavour astronauts continue their work. Uh, right before we took our break, astronaut Story Musgrave was about to remove a cover from the pickup mirror at the end of the new wide-field planetary camera. Uh, he says he got it off without problems. Let's listen now as the camera is, is prepared for pushing it into the side of the telescope. I'm ready. Okay, let's start in. Okay, I'm moving up now. Just that three feet about one inch per second. I think it's safe to say they didn't break the mirror because they're <laughs> installing the, uh, the new camera uh, right on schedule. As uh, those of you who were watching five minutes ago noticed at the very instant that he began to remove that cover, we lost our picture from space. And when the picture returned, the mirror cover was off. I'm on it. Okay, keep it coming. We're going in the entrance, just keep it coming. Moving up, we're just gonna let it come. come. Let it come. I want it a little, little higher. Okay, a little higher, higher sorry. There we go. On the right of your screen is astronaut Story Musgrave. He can see inside the telescope and he's looking at that mirror to make sure the mirror doesn't hit the side or doesn't hit anything as it is reinstalled at the end of the wide field planetary camera. There are four rails that guide this camera into place on the telescope, and um, uh, uh, it's, it's on the rail. Musgrave points out that the camera is on one of the handrails right now. This is CNN International. CNN International, this is World News with Bettina Lucia at the CNN Center. Hello and welcome to World News. Less than three hours ago, U.S. astronauts began their third spacewalk to repair the Hubble Space Telescope. The goal of this walk is to fix Hubble's blurry vision by installing a new camera system. The Wide Field Planetary Camera, or WIFPIC, is a series of cameras the size of a baby grand piano. The WIFPIG includes lenses designed to compensate for Hubble's faulty main mirror. And CNN International will bring you extended live coverage of the Hubble repair mission about 15 minutes from now. Hello, and now we resume our special live coverage of the third spacewalk of the astronauts of the U.S. shuttle Endeavour, who are now on the sixth day of their mission trying to repair the U.S. telescope Hubble, which has been uh, severely hampered in some of the things it can see. And you can, you can watch live pictures now. And in a moment, uh, CNN's John Holloman will take over with 
his uh, wonderful running commentary of everything that is happening. Deborah Houston, we would like the ground strap secured, not touching the connector. Copy that. Metal on the camera to metal on the telescope is about to be attached by uh, astronaut Story Musgrave or Jeff Hoffman. We'll listen as they do that, and as soon as they do, that will be a, a very good sign. Once again, we um, have to depend on satellite technology from NASA and uh, from the U.S. government to provide us with uh, live pictures from space. And there are times when the satellites are not in position with the telescope to provide us with live picture. But we have a couple of astronomers from the Fernbank Science Center in Atlanta who are joining us also to provide commentary on what is happening and what it all means. Um, Anita Kern, we were talking about the reasons to have something like the Hubble Space Telescope. As astronomers, would you and David like to see uh, different telescopes in space? And do you think, given budget restraints in the United States and in other countries around the world, we are, we are ever going to see telescopes better than this in space? We see a lot of different types of telescopes. There are telescopes up there that are specifically designed to look at in the ultraviolet part of the spectrum. There are some, that, some up there that look in the infrared part of the spectrum. So we do have both probes, which take pictures of the solar system and uh, various planets, and we, and like Mars and the Voyager flybys of Jupiter and, and Saturn and Neptune. And uh, so we are seeing lots of different things in space that are sending back information. It's just the quantity of information that's expected back from Hubble uh, should keep everyone busy for a long time, and it should be a, a lot greater than what we've seen up to this point. All right, to bring our international viewers up to date on something else, the uh, Space Shuttle Endeavour and the Hubble Space Telescope are out over the Atlantic Ocean. They crossed over Central America a few minutes ago. Uh, the light that you see on the side of the telescope will continue to get brighter as it approaches Africa. Our viewers in Africa might want to look up in the sky and you might be able to see uh, this spacecraft coming overhead in the next 10 to 15 minutes. The astronauts are, are getting more brightly illuminated now. We'll listen to Kyle Herring from NASA for a moment. The final connection, the blind mate connection, uh, turning that bolt about five turns or so. And Houston, uh, we show about four minutes to sunrise. How's our attitude going to be on the SGS doors? Okay, the astronauts are about to come into sunrise, and uh, while they wait for the sun to come up, we're going to take a break. We'll come back and show you what it looks like as the space telescope uh, with a brand new camera sees sunrise for the first time with that camera installed. Stay with us. Welcome back. I'm John Holloman. We're covering the mission of Space Shuttle Endeavour to repair the Hubble Space Telescope. One of the interesting things about being an astronaut is that you get to see the sun come up a lot more in space than you do on Earth. The, uh, those of us here on Earth since this mission started have been able to see the sun come up five times here on the east coast of the United States. We'll get to see it again in a few hours from now. Those of you watching in Europe have already seen a sunrise today. The space shuttle astronauts are going to see their 74th or 75th sunrise during the same time period in just about, well, there it is. You saw it uh, occur as the uh, sun uh, hit off um, the rear, the tail section where the orbital maneuvering system of uh, the space shuttle is located. And there's the first sunlight on the Hubble Space Telescope since its uh, new wide field and planetary camera was put into place just a short time ago. The astronauts are now, they've completed the job. It's in, it's been checked for electrical continuity, the lights work, and uh, that's a good sign. Uh, We've, uh, we've invited you to join our conversation uh, by phone, and uh, we have a couple of astronomers here who are very smart about astronomy, and we have one correspondent who will try to answer other questions if possible. We have a caller from Ohio. Go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, um, I was wondering, uh, well, actually, I've got a couple questions and a comment here. Uh, I was wondering, uh, I've got a scanner here, and I was wondering what megahertz uh, NASA uses to communicate from the ground station up to the shuttle. And, uh, they also, won't tell us. They don't want us to listen in. Um, I've tried to get that frequency for a long, long time. Um, the, it uses the uh, tracking and data relay satellites, which are also used for spy satellite communication. And okay. um, so it's hard to listen in. I'll tell you that. It's, um, the fact that um, we can put it up on CNN, it's, I guess, the best way for all of us to listen in. Okay. What's your next question? Um, I was wondering how they're going to pretty much like turn the telescope on its pitch and yaw axis 
uh, once it's finished and it's back in orbit. I was wondering what the propulsion units are on that. I don't have the answer to that. I can find out for you. You all know? Well, there are no propulsion units on the telescope itself because you don't want to have anything to pollute the um, equipment on the telescope. So what they do with the, um, uh, the, the arm is they uh, gently move the telescope to the proper uh, altitude and uh, place, place it and let it go in the proper place. And then the shuttle gets out of its way, basically. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to NASA right now, and we find out that astronaut Story Musgrave is closing a door next to the wide-field planetary camera. It's a door he was able to use to look through while that camera was going in. It's the, uh, the door that contains the fine guidance sensors for the telescopes. Those um, sensors allow the telescope to point at the thing that uh, ground-based astronomers want to look at at a particular time. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back with more phone calls as the astronauts um, are continuing to work outside in the cargo bay on the space telescope. As they uh, get a little bit further along in this orbit, we'll probably be able to see our own planet down below as they fly overhead. Back in a minute. Stay with us. Welcome back. Space Shuttle Endeavor is flying over sunrise now, over, the, over planet Earth. They've completed a major part of their mission for uh, the entire 12-day mission, actually, replacing the wide field and planetary camera aboard the Hubble Space Telescope. This picture, by the way, is being taken from a camera which is mounted about halfway down the Canadian robot arm. At the far end of that arm, you can see astronaut Jeff Hoffman, who um, has, uh, has already pulled out the uh, original wide field camera for the telescope and has used the same arm to uh, plug in the new camera. The new camera has been tested uh, electrically and uh, it, from what we could see, it appeared it wasn't jarred or anything to, uh, to mess up the optics inside. This camera is going to be able to do things that, previous, um, that the telescope couldn't do previously, we are told. And we'll be talking about that with uh, our two astronomical experts. Anita Kern and David Dundee as the morning continues. We have some phone callers on the line. One, our first one's from Ontario. Go ahead, you're on with us. Thank you very kindly. I'm Joe Pizzola calling from North Bay, Ontario. Uh, thanks for the plug for the Canada arm, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to utilize an interstellar medium like this. I have several questions, a million of them actually, but uh, in the sake of time. John, uh, what happens to the old WIFPIC, the, uh, the Wide Field Planetary Camera? Uh, for uh, Mr. Dundee and Ms. Kern, uh, what, as astronomers, are they specifically looking for to learn from Hubble? And uh, does the CNN crew have any of Hubble's earlier pictures on file, and maybe can we see them later? Wow, what an interesting question. We just, this moment, uh, put together a picture, uh, uh, an older picture of Saturn taken uh, by, by the Hubble Space Telescope, which we'll probably be able to show you in just a minute. Uh, the old camera is going to go back to the factory, and I'll bet it'll be updated again, and uh, it might even uh, conceivably be reflown on a shuttle um, with even more new parts inside to, uh, uh, to, to do the third generation job of wide field planetary exploration. Now, in our picture on TV here now, you can see um, over, um, over Hoffman's shoulder as he uh, continues to work around in the cargo bay. And um, the astronaut, as we can tell, continue to be having a pretty good time out there as they've got sunlight down below. Two astronauts are swapping. Okay, we've got, let's listen just for a second to NASA, then we'll let our astronomers answer your astronomy question. His to Musgrave to allow him to complete closing the fine guidance sensor door. The fine guidance sensor is uh, located in a radial uh, cavity. Uh, just as the same size that the wide field and planetary camera is. It's located about a quarter of the way to, around uh, the telescope. To look into the, to the side of the, the uh, uh, telescope when the camera was being replaced there. Our next caller, oh, let's, forgive me, uh, we had questions about astronomy and we have astronomers who know it all. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the, some of the objectives of the Hubble Space Telescope are to determine uh, the size and age of the universe and they do that by looking at things in the very distant past and, and that are very far away like the quasars and they're trying to determine uh, maybe how galaxies evolve. That's one of the uh, things that we hope the wide field planetary camera when it images these very distant objects uh, may even see structure of galaxies around these quasars which are very old objects. 
Yeah, if you can find structure around the quasars, it may give you some sort of evolutionary link between these uh, ancient objects and more modern galaxies we see today. And it may start filling in some of the gaps we have from uh, the birth of the universe to the kinds of matter we see around us. Um, the other things that uh, the Hubble will be able to tell us will be things like looking at the nuclei of very active galaxies. Um, how many of these active galaxies have uh, black holes uh, in them, massive black holes, perhaps causing uh, disruption of uh, the galaxies, throwing out, hurling out material? Uh, how many of these galaxies show evidence of collision? Uh, we're finding in some of the very early Hubble uh, information that um, apparently a lot of these uh, strange looking galaxies we see may have suffered collisions. I also want to say that um, some of this information, uh, much of this information by the way, uh, will probably get into the public domain fairly quickly. Um, one of the things that's happened over the last few years is a real information revolution uh, with the uh, advent of personal computers and things like CD-ROMs that can store a lot of information. And for example, most of the images off the Voyager spacecraft are available uh, to people in the general public. They can buy them or find them in their, some of their larger uh, libraries to look at. And um, you might even make your own discoveries looking at some of this information. You don't have to be necessarily a, an astronomer sitting at the Hubble Space Institute. Yeah, this is it's one of the interesting things about uh, being able to see these pictures on CNN as we uh, continue to watch the astronauts work in space right now. Uh, we may make discoveries about the telescope. I know that two nights ago, after the telescope was first attached to the space shuttle, uh, uh, an astronomer and I were looking at it very carefully to see if we could see any signs of damage. And um, we discovered none. It turned out the astronomers and scientists at NASA also discovered none, and uh, our viewers discovered none. Um, the other thing our Ontario caller asked about was uh, a picture from the Hubble Space Telescope taken before the new wide field and planetary camera was installed. We have one to show you. It's a picture of Saturn that was taken uh, more than a year ago by the Space Telescope. And uh, well, you can see the grainy nature of it. Anita um, Kern. Um, looking at this picture, according to NASA, it, uh, there's a planet-wide storm across Saturn. That's the that's large white yeah. area that you're seeing there. Yeah. And uh, actually, Saturn is mostly hydrogen with some impurities, and the white uh, area you see, of course, it's all gas. Mm -hmm. The white area is, would be methane, uh, excuse me, ammonia crystals, and the darker brownish area underneath it is probably due to methane. Now, let's, uh, let's anticipate a similar picture taken with the new wide field camera. How much clearer might it be than that? Oh, it should increase by at least, uh, the sensitivity of the new camera should in, is a, supposed to increase by a factor of two, so we should see much more detail. Not as many white dots, much more clearly defined edges on and, things. And the nice thing is we'll be certain of it. I mean, right now we're not really sure if we're, the features we're seeing could be artifacts or caused by the uh, deconvoluting process that are, that's in the computer program. Yeah, let's uh, talk about what's going on in space right now. On the left, Jeff Hoffman at the end of the robot arm is uh, up at the back of the wide field planetary camera, the new and improved model. He's removed the handhold from it and uh, he's, um, he's just doing a little work out there making sure it is correctly seated. It certainly appears that it is. Story Musgrave, on the right of your screen, you can sort of see him outlined against the tail of the shuttle is um, removing a, um, a, a foothold, a, a piece of equipment that was used earlier in the mission, and he's closing a door there that was used to, uh, to help him have a look inside the space telescope just a few minutes ago. The next thing that the astronauts are going to be doing, by the way, is um, both of them will go to the end of the robot arm, and they'll go up to the top of the telescope, which will be tilted uh, at a, a slight angle so that the astronauts can uh, add some, some new equipment up at the top of the telescope. Should be interesting TV to watch. Our next caller is from Toronto. Go ahead. Hi, I have um, two questions to ask of you. Mm -hmm. The first one would be is, could this detect um, any kind of extraterrestrial spacecraft in our solar system or another one? And if it could, could it beam a uh, radio wave or receive a radio wave in the direction of that? No, there, there are no radio detectors on the Hubble spacecraft. Um, a, as far as uh, being able to um, see a spacecraft, it would have to be pretty big. 
um, or extremely bright uh, for or the Or close to the telescope, right? <laughs> yeah, if it landed on the telescope, we'd probably know about it. But uh, in, in general, no, the, space, the, the Hubble is not a, a good one to look for spaceships. Everything's going well aboard the shuttle Endeavour right now, we are told. The astronauts have completed the major task that they were supposed to do um, in this uh, six or seven hour long spacewalk. And we're going to take a break. We'll come back with more of your phone calls and more of our conversation about what's happening and why it's important as CNN's coverage from Endeavour continues. We invite you to call us from wherever you are around the world at this moment. We're covering the Hubble Space Telescope repair mission live on CNN. At what you see at the center of your screen at the very bottom is the old wide field and planetary camera which was removed from the Hubble Space Telescope about an hour and 15 minutes ago. We have phone callers uh, lined up from around the world now. Our first call is coming in from Alaska. Go ahead. Yeah, hello. My name is David Saiget, and I'm calling from Cordoba, Alaska on Prince William Sound where the Exxon Valdez oil spill is. And I have two questions regarding uh, materials. Uh, I was wondering what the speci specific material his uh, tether is made of that holds him to the ship. Uh, it looks like ordinary household cable, but I'm sure it's not. But I'm wondering what kind of material it is that can withstand those 500 degree swings in temperature from night to day. And then second, uh, I was wondering what are the uh, increased risks from radiation, ultraviolet and cosmic radiation, and what kind of material is the outside of his suit made from to uh, absorb those? Uh, radiation rays. Okay, the, the cable, the tether that's holding him to the um, to the side of the uh, space shuttle is uh, is not an ordinary household cable. It would be a lot less expensive to do this if it were, probably, but it might not work as well. It's a composite material. It's woven, and uh, it is very strong, and um, they've had no trouble, actually, with it withstanding extremes of temperature uh, to this point. The, um, uh, geez, can I remember the other part of the question? Cosmic rays were part of it. Yeah, cosmic and rays. Cosmic rays, unfortunately, uh, whether you're in space or sitting in your living room, uh, they uh, zip through your body and through the Earth quite readily. Uh, so there is no shielding from cosmic rays. You know, uh, an interesting experiment that NASA did that got um, a lot of publicity um, about two years ago on many shuttle missions, I mean, a series of maybe six or seven, NASA flew a human skull which had cosmic ray detectors inside of it. I mean, it was a bizarre story when we first heard of it. And uh, that was done to see whether over a long period of time, the cosmic rays would get into the central part of a human skull. And um, it, it turned out, I think, from, uh, from the, uh, the numerous flights over more than a year that this skull was uh, in, a, in one of the uh, crew compartments of the shuttle, that um, they found that there was no terrific increase in, in radiation damage. Our next caller is from Edmonton. Go ahead, please. You're on the air. Hello, my name is David Prakashan, and I'm calling from Edmonton, home of the Oilers and the Eskimos. First, I'd like to extend my best wishes to everybody involved in this endeavor. And what I'd like to know is the names of the astronauts and their area of expertise, and how many space agencies are collaborating in this effort, and are the Russians involved? Thank you. Okay, the Russians are not involved in, uh, in this particular effort. However, an announcement was made uh, today or yesterday, depending on where you are on Earth, that um, the United States and the European Space Agency have agreed to cooperate with the, uh, with the Russians in future space exploration efforts and uh, the prospect of having a joint uh, space station involving the Europeans, the Americans, the Canadians, and the Russians uh, is, uh, is much more likely than it was as much as six months ago. Look at this picture with me, please. Um, what we are looking at is um, astronaut Jeff Hoffman on the uh, end of the shuttle's robot arm. He's outside the space shuttle cargo bay in space. He is standing on the robot arm over the, uh, the tail of the space shuttle, over the rear wing. And uh, to his left, you see the, the original wide field planetary camera. He's about to put the mirror cover on the small mirror that you see that looks sort of like a fish hook out at the end of that camera. And uh, we're going to zoom in and watch as he does it. This procedure uh, is just as critical as it was when, Musgra when uh, Story Musgrave replaced the mirror cover from, uh, from the brand new camera a few minutes ago. Why don't we watch and listen as this happens? And then we have another caller from uh, Birmingham, England we're going to talk to. But let's watch this before we go to our caller uh, in, uh, in England. Yeah, 
I should open the door and wait till Jeff uh, gets to that with big one. Stop. Stop. I think he'd probably go ahead and store. He's going to be ready in just a couple of minutes. Yeah, I was thinking of a clearance back there. Looks okay. Yeah, I think it clears when it's open. Yeah. Hard pushing this in. Uh, no. Another critical Jeff, procedure. Your helmet. There. Would it be better if you were lower? Well, yeah, okay. Let's let, let bring me in and I'll, I'll stand up more upright. Oh, uh, I can, uh, uh, just bring, bring me further in. This way my helmet okay, will stay further away. If you show on me, I can pitch your body up on such a Claude Nicolier is operating the robot arm on which uh, Jeff Hoffman is standing, and he's pushing him in to the uh, wide field camera now. Now this is going to be critical. Got to make sure that that mirror, the tiny mirror that you can't see now, it's obscured by Hoffman's space helmet, does not, uh, does not get hit or uh, damaged in any way. This maneuver just as critical. Is good. Open the R-Sipe door when he's ready. Just a minute. As the, uh, as the maneuver okay. to take the, uh, the cover off of the other mirror. But uh, one nice thing about this, uh, if this mirror is broken, the telescope isn't out of business. You can bring it home and get another one and put it on there. So I wonder if that switch has to be on back by the soap to get those lights, you know, that work light switch. This, uh, this particular spacewalk is being conducted out over the rear wing of the space shuttle. And um, it's... Uh, it's quite something. Um, why don't we do this? We have a caller on hold from Birmingham, England, who has been waiting, spending a lot of money for, uh, for several minutes uh, waiting to talk to us. Let's get that caller in, then we'll come back and tell you who the astronauts are and, and where they're from. Go ahead, Birmingham. Hello, good morning, John. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to CNN um, for the uh, extensive coverage that I'm receiving over here. It's the only American channel I can get with, with uh, uh, some good pictures. But basically, what I wanted to ask you was, um, as the orbiter is on, um, if I'm right in saying, orbital track 46, which like, sweeps across the world, can you um, briefly explain why it does the track it does? Um, say it goes through Central America, down to the south tip of Africa, then over north of Australia. Yeah, the, uh, the track that it's on is based on where it's launched from, basically. And uh, it was launched, uh, it can be launched in an orbit that takes it much higher. It's come over uh, the British Isles um, in the past. It's, uh, um, but for this particular mission, the space shuttle had to be launched in the identical orbit to the Hubble Space Telescope because um, they didn't want to adjust the orbit of the telescope and they wanted to make sure that the, um, that the shuttle could get to the telescope. So one of the reasons that this mission is taking place in the middle of the night, United States time, is that um, they had to launch when the telescope was directly over Cape Canaveral in Florida. And um, it was only coming over Cape Canaveral at a period of the first uh, potential launch day was four o'clock in the morning. Ah, this is great, home movies or uh, <laughs> home snapshots being taken by astronaut Hoffman as he moves away from the uh, old wide field planetary camera. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if NASA will develop those for him or uh, <laughs> he'll have to take him to the drugstore. This is uh, something. Would you verify that uh, your light signature was uh, not affected by sunlight? Yes, uh, story and Jeff both looked at it. You're pretty positive the story they're not on, right? The camera that's taking this picture for us, by the way, is located about halfway down the Canadian robot arm. Yeah, we've, we've seen them uh, in, in daylight in the clean room, and there's no lighter out there right now that was in the clean room. Okay, Tom, we understand, and uh, be advised we are getting indications on the ground. Okay, copy. There will come a time, um, I would bet in the next uh, four to six months, that these pictures that Jeff Offman are taking will be made available to the rest of us. The astronauts have an IMAX camera out there in the cargo bay. I'm not sure that this is the, uh, the viewfinder and the lens from the IMAX camera. In fact, I don't think it is. It appears to be a still camera. If it were connected somehow to the IMAX, it would have to 
Well, it just couldn't be. It's, it's got to be either a small video camera or a still picture camera. You can see it's protected with uh, white uh, packaging to keep it from being damaged out there in the vacuum of space. There are two IMAX cameras on the... All right. While, uh, while Jeff Hoffman is making these movies or these still pictures, whatever they are, of uh, the uh, Widefield Planetary Camera, which I hope we'll be able to show you in the next three or four months, we're going to take another break. We'll be right back. The Hubble Space Telescope may now be able to see straight. We're not sure, but uh, certainly the wide field planetary camera that uh, was being replaced in tonight's spacewalk has now been replaced. The new camera is, uh, is in place. The astronauts have checked out the electrical connections. The lights are on inside the wide field planetary camera. And out in space right now, the astronauts are about 320 miles above the Earth. They are in darkness, and uh, we don't have live picture from them at, right, at this moment. But the astronaut team, Story Musgrave, and... Uh, his partner, Rick Hoffman, they're out there. They're doing their best uh, at this point to accomplish the last goal of this night's spacewalking mission. That is to go up to the top of the, uh, of the space telescope and add a couple of pieces of equipment called magnetometers to the Hubble Space Telescope. These magnetometers will allow the telescope to figure out where the Earth is in relationship to the Hubble Space Telescope, and it, that'll keep it on course as it continues its mission to look out into the heavens. Our coverage um, will continue throughout the night as long as the astronauts are outside and we have live pictures to bring to you. We will bring them to you. Our viewers ask uh, who these astronauts are, and we don't have time to go through complete rundowns on all of them, but I'll tell you about the payload commander, the man who's been doing much of the work outside during uh, the current spacewalk, Story Musgrave, 58 years old, a man with uh, numerous college degrees, more than five. He's a medical doctor. He also has a degree in literature. And um, he's the leader of the spacewalking astronauts. Musgrave said a couple of weeks ago he's choreographed every step of this mission, and it certainly is going well, perhaps as a result of that. Our coverage will continue coming up in a few minutes. We urge you to stay with us. CNN's coverage of the mission of Space Shuttle Endeavor continues. I'm John Holloman reporting. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Worldwide Update. Brian Christie here at the CNN Center in Atlanta. We begin tonight hundreds of miles above the Earth with more of CNN's extended live coverage of the Hubble repair mission. Two Endeavor astronauts have been working on the Mammoth Telescope for more than three hours now. CNN's John Holloman has been keeping an eye on the spacewalk. He joins us now with an update. John? Brian, things are going very well. The astronauts have had uh, three nights of spacewalks, and what they're doing right now is cleaning up after the successful replacement of the telescope's main eye. The wide field and planetary camera is located just above the gyroscope unit in the telescope, and the astronauts in space tonight pulled out one version of the camera and plugged in a new one. We can take some pictures and show you how it looked just a few minutes ago as the astronauts were in space working on this project. After it was done, Astronaut Jeff Hoffman, just about five minutes ago, uh, replaced the lens cover, the mirror cover rather, on the, uh, the old and now replaced wide field and planetary camera. As he did this, he was standing on the uh, Canadian built robot arm out over the wing of the space shuttle. He was not in the cargo bay at all. That's uh, one of the cargo bay doors that you see underneath him. He was uh, up out of the cargo bay over planet Earth as he uh, replaced this mirror cover. Now that that's done, this, uh, this version of the wide field camera can be stored in the shuttle's cargo bay. The astronauts are probably, in fact, at this moment, involved in the process of doing that, putting it away. It'll come back to Earth where it'll be looked at by scientists and perhaps refurbished and maybe even someday sent back up into space on a future uh, telescope uh, upgrade mission. The astronauts have one more thing to do after they stow this, uh, this camera in the cargo bay. They're going to go up to the top of the, um, of the Hubble Space Telescope and add some new equipment to equipment that's already there that will allow the telescope to better look down at planet Earth and make sure, or rather, uh, fly over planet Earth and, uh, and be in the right attitude connected to the Earth. This is kind of interesting, Brian. Right now in this picture, Jeff Hoffman moving out on the robot arm making either some home movies or some still photographs of the work that he had just done as he uh, was backed away on the robot arm by um, uh, Swiss astronaut Claude Nicolier. And uh, it's interesting that the astronauts, at the successful completion of at least one part of their mission, able to, uh, to take some pictures to verify that they, they really were up in space after all. Right now, the shuttle is about to fly over Australia. It's flying upside down as far as uh, the Earth is concerned. The payload bay doors are open and the astronauts could look up over their shoulders and see the Earth down below when they get there. 
We'll be back with more live coverage of this uh, as the mission continues tonight and in future nights. Brian? Okay, look forward to that moments from now. We're covering the Space Shuttle Endeavor, and we invite you to stay with us. Now, straight ahead on Worldwide Update, it's back to the Hubble repair job. We will have live pictures from space, so we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy. We'll be back. We're getting more live pictures from the Space Shuttle Endeavor, 320 miles straight up, and John Holliman's here to update us. John? Brian, the mission so far this morning has gone very, very well for the astronauts. Uh, here's what's going on in space right now. You can probably see uh, astronaut Jeff Hoffman is uh, virtually upside down on the Canadian robot arm. He's at the top of your screen, and the arm is sort of dangling down in the middle of the, the top of your screen in the picture. Underneath him, Story Musgrave, the payload commander, is assisting as the two of them have already lowered the uh, old wide-field planetary camera down into the cargo bay of the shuttle. And uh, they're locking it into place now. It's very important that this camera be uh, not jostled as it comes back to Earth because the uh, NASA and other scientific and ast astronomical experts will be going over that camera with a fine tooth comb or the scientific equivalent of that uh, when it does get back to Earth in about a week from now. And uh, it'll probably be, or potentially at least, be updated. And uh, our live picture from Endeavor, as you can see, it shows those astronauts hard at work out there in the cargo bay putting that, uh, putting the old camera back where it should be. We asked a, a little while ago to um, uh, invite other viewers to join our conversation. We have, uh, we have a caller now on the line from Honolulu. Go ahead. Hi, Hello. David. Yeah, go ahead. You're on the air. Okay, I have a couple of questions. We're calling from Honolulu. And I was just curious about whether they are using the EMV jetpacks that they have used on previous missions. Nope, they're not. Um, there's no need to do that for this kind of spacewalk, uh, so that they're not using the jetpacks. What's your next question? Second question is, um, we know that they're visible from various points on the Earth. We were curious about how to locate when it's visible or if it will be visible from where we are. Okay, I'll, I'll try to keep you posted from time to time. The fact is the, uh, the shuttle is traveling at 17,000 miles an hour and it goes around the world every 90 minutes. And uh, what I'll try to do is the next time that I, if I can see on a NASA graphical map that it's uh, in your neighborhood or is going to be in your neighborhood, I'll let you know. Every time I, I see where the shuttle is relative to, um, to the Earth below, I try to, try to point it out. And uh, so, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll continue to keep you updated. Do you have another question? No, that's all. Thanks a lot. We love the coverage. All right. It's fun to provide the coverage. It's fun to participate in it. Um, if you have a question about astronomy, our colleague Anita Kern from the Fernbank Science Center here in Atlanta is also available. Why don't we listen in for just a moment to the astronauts, Anita, and see uh, what they're talking about as they complete this part of the mission. That's Robot Ops Checklist 5-9. NASA has more checklists than anybody. Okay, yeah, uh, we copy uh, Houston. And uh, if they uh, satisfactorily get it stowed, are we going to need to do the 2200 maneuver, or we'll, we'll be able to go to the 2300 maneuver? Same by all check. Off one foot. You'll see the uh, robot arm, I believe, move to um, down toward the telescope by about uh, a distance of, of one foot now as the astronauts continue their work out in space. Our next caller is from British Columbia. Go ahead. British Columbia, you're, you're with us on CNN. Go ahead. Hello, British Columbia. I guess we've lost our caller there. Oh, you got me. Okay, go ahead. Uh, my name is David Tim. I'm in Greenwood, British Columbia. I'd like to just generally congratulate the Nassau people on what's coming off as a very successful mission. And my question, actually, i got two of them. Uh, one would be on the focal distances that it's capable of, assuming that it's got good vision. For instance, if you pointed it at the moon, would it be capable of very detailed uh, information coming back? And uh, my second question would be, how do they orient it, aim it to different uh, projects, stars, or nebula, whatever. Okay, they, they aim it through a series of reaction wheels, and um, it, um, I'm not exactly sure how reaction wheels work, but uh, Anita, you may know something about that. Um, the other question was focal distances, for example, could it be pointed at the moon? Anita? 
Um, you wouldn't want to point it at the moon because it's too bright. It's really designed uh, for faint objects in, in outer space, so we don't wouldn't ever point it in that direction. But the faint, I mean, the um, WIF pick, the wide field planetary camera, when it's pointed, if it were pointed at the moon, it would take about a hundred different shots to give you. Hubble had a brille. In der vergangenen Nacht wechselten Astronauten der Raumfähre Endeavour die Hauptkamera des defekten Weltraumteleskops. Die Astronauten Hoffman und Musgrave zogen das Teil wie eine Schublade aus dem Teleskop und schoben die neue Fernbereichsplanetenkamera hinein. Die Reparatur war nötig, weil Hubble durch einen falsch geschliffenen Spiegel kurzsichtig war. Ob das Teleskop nun mit Hilfe der 170 Millionen Mark teuren Kamera klare Bilder liefert, werden die Wissenschaftler erst in zwei Monaten feststellen können. Another successful day's work in space for the crew on board the space shuttle Endeavour. Two astronauts turned mechanics installed the first of two cameras designed to correct the Hubble Space Telescope's faulty vision. Hubble will be fitted with another set of corrective optics on Tuesday night. CNN's John Holloman reports on the repair mission so far. They've done it again. The Endeavour astronauts had a complex job in space. Story Musgrave and Jeff Hoffman pulled the main instrument from the Hubble Space Telescope and replaced it. The wide field and planetary camera provides more than half the pictures from the telescope. Balanced on the end of the robot arm, Jeff Hoffman pulled out the old camera. Story Musgrave, the payload commander, assisted on the right side. They stored the old camera temporarily on the side of the cargo bay, then pulled the improved camera from its storage locker. Hoffman pulled the new camera over to the telescope and he and Musgrave installed it during darkness. The most critical part of the job was removing a protective cover from the camera's mirror. Later, both astronauts were lifted to the top of the telescope to add two instruments which will tell the telescope where the Earth's magnetic field is located. The unusual maneuver gave both spacewalkers spectacular views of the Earth from high above the shuttle. As they finished their work, ground controllers asked the obvious question. Well, every day it's becoming more and more of a can you top this. They'll certainly try. Coming next, a spacewalk to add a telephone booth sized package of corrective optics that might properly focus the rest of the telescope's instruments. John Holloman, CNN. Die amerikanischen Raumfähre Endeavour hat ihre Reparaturarbeiten im Weltall fortgesetzt. Bei der Operation wurde die Weitwinkelkamera des Weltraumteleskops Hubble durch ein anderes Modell ersetzt. Die neue Kamera soll eine präzise Schärfeneinstellung des kurzsichtigen Teleskops ermöglichen. Joining us, Sarah, good morning. Good morning, Brian and Katie. Well, America's doctors in space have made another house call on the ailing Hubble telescope. This time, astronauts from the shuttle Endeavour were optometrists removing and replacing a camera to help open the telescope's eyes to the universe. Jeffrey Hoffman and Story Musgrave slid out the old camera as smoothly as opening a drawer, we're told, and slid in a new one. My side looks good. Yeah. Mine's beautiful. Okay. You can see back behind the telescope over your right shoulder. All right. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Beautiful. For Hoffman and Musgrave, it was a second walk in space. Crewmates Tom Akers and Catherine Thornton have also stepped outside to work on the telescope. Another new optical system is to be installed tonight during a fourth spacewalk. Shuttle Endeavour's astronaut mechanics logged their third successful spacewalk this morning, giving the Hubble Space Telescope a new camera. CNN's John Holloman reports on the ongoing repair and replacement mission. They've done it again. The Endeavour astronauts had a complex job in space. Story Musgrave and Jeff Hoffman pulled the main instrument from the Hubble Space Telescope and replaced it. The wide field and planetary camera provides more than half the pictures from the telescope. Balanced on the end of the robot arm, Jeff Hoffman pulled out the old camera. Story Musgrave, the payload commander, assisted on the right side. They stored the old camera temporarily on the side of the cargo bay, then pulled the improved camera from its storage locker. Hoffman pulled the new camera over to the telescope, and he and Musgrave installed it during darkness. The most critical part of the job was removing a protective cover from the camera's mirror. Later, both astronauts were lifted to the top of the telescope to add two instruments which will tell the telescope where the Earth's magnetic field is located. The unusual maneuver gave both spacewalkers spectacular views of the Earth from high above the shuttle. 
As they finish their work, crowd controllers ask the obvious question. Well, every day it's becoming more and more of a can you top this. They'll certainly try. Coming next, a spacewalk to add a telephone booth sized package of corrective optics that might properly focus the rest of the telescope's instruments. John Holloman, CNN reporting. Astronauts Kathy Thornton and Tom Akers will do tonight's outdoor work and CNN plans live coverage. Sechs Stunden arbeiteten die beiden Astronauten Hoffman und Musgrave im All, um die 280 Kilogramm schwere und über zwei Meter breite Weitwinkelkamera einzusetzen. Erste Tests zeigten, dass die Kamera korrekt arbeitet. Morgen soll Hubble eine Korrekturoptik, die eigentliche Brille, erhalten. Ob die Sehschwäche von Hubble durch die Reparaturen behoben ist, wird sich allerdings erst in einigen Wochen herausstellen. act going on and uh, we're not protected until after sunset. Okay, thanks a lot. Hoffman now uh, carrying the handhold up to the width pick. Hoffman's now about to release a ground strap, a grounding strap that's located on the outside of the drawer. And the handle's now attached onto the guide studs. That's the handle that'll be used uh, to hold it when Hoffman slides the uh, instrument out of the telescope. The instrument's about the size of a baby grand piano. Are you 
from the cavity store. We're right in the entrance. Yes. Okay, let's try to get the body inside now. Okay. We're in a fast. Okay. Okay, stop the arm. Brad, stop. I want you to center me up now again. Okay. Up. About one foot again? Yes. Okay, do that. But you, you ought to be able to see it. Sure. Okay, that's a good height. Keep coming in. Okay. Okay, I'm in one inch. You're in one inch. And I have it. You have it? Yes, I have it. Okay, I'm going to let go. And I'm going to untether. Now I'll get out and look at the cavity. Oh, Roger, Storm. Okay, are you ready for me to let go? 
Yes, I have it. Okay. Very nice. Pull me back, Clark. Okay, I will. I'm going to get the PR. B. Put it on. The light comes on. With the camera now installed, uh, Claude Nicolier will reposition Jeff Hoffman so that he can now uh, completely latch the new instrument into the telescope. Placement magnetometers each have uh, four turn knobs to lock them in place over the top of the existing magnetometers. a very good picture, Jeff. Okay, well, people who know the known magnetometers will certainly recognize them. Uh, the one that says ZY was the one that was on top. That's the first one that I noticed was actually uh, peeled up a little bit. It was sort of sitting about like, like so. Uh, and when I touched Flipped up, and so it, it peeled off very easily. Let me show you the uh, underside. 